Everybody loves to laugh. Even the meanest people like to laugh at someone, while most of us also like to laugh with others. That's why our society is full of ways to get in a good belly laugh, from stand-up shows to humorous movies, books, and even comic strips. What you might not realize is that comedy is not a new art form. In fact, it may be one of the oldest forms of literature. This video will give you an overview of the history of comedic literature, including info about different types of humor and how comedy has developed. Now, what makes people laugh? Depends on the individual as well as their culture. What's hilarious to one person might be highly offensive to someone else and vice versa. But one common thread across cultures and individuals is that humor usually goes against our expectations. There's a buildup that makes us think we know what to expect, but the punchline usually gives us something different. Maybe that punchline flies in the face of the rules of our society or culture. Maybe it's simply surprising. Or maybe we laugh because the punchline finally levels the, the playing field and shows how we're all more alike than we like to think. A few examples include physical or body humor, like fart jokes. While everyone passes gas, polite society likes to pretend that no one ever does. The fart joke releases, pun intended, some of the pressure to be so perfect or to pretend that other people are. On a rhyming note, farces are a form of comedy that make us laugh out of pure shock because the characters and events are so far beyond what's possible that we're stunned into laughter. Farce was especially strong in, in ancient open air theaters where people in the very back needed to be able to understand even if they couldn't hear the dialogue. The fun is in going against the grain and experiencing something new, especially in the middle of a repetitive or humdrum life. On the other hand, Puns are a form of wordplay that gets chuckles from some people by mixing up different meanings for the same word or using words that sound alike to surprise us. For example, the old joke, make like a tree and leave, uses a pun by blending together the two meanings of the word leave. And finally, satire is another form of comedy that always existed, but it took off even more towards the end of the European Dark Ages. The humor in satire comes from taking down or pointing out the inconsistencies and ridiculous aspects of powerful individuals, groups, or schools of thought. We see a lot of satire today in political cartoons or parody shows like The Daily Show. Part of the joy of satire is seeing that others agree with you and feeling that the big shots aren't as big and powerful as they seem. Now you may be asking, why did satire explode into such popularity in the 1600s, 1700s, and beyond? Part of the reason is because political parties and freedom of thought became more possible. As you've probably noticed before the age of reason or enlightenment, I'm putting both of those in quotes, there were only a few people whose opinions mattered. It was either the kings or the gods, Everyone else was expected to do as they were told and think whatever wouldn't get them murdered, I mean executed. But starting in the European Middle Ages, when political, scientific, and religious revolutions, plus encounters with the quote unquote new world, called everything into question, it suddenly seemed possible and even necessary to challenge everything and think more independently. The invention of the printing press in 1436 gave more people access to literacy, both in sharing their own ideas and in discovering others. In 1517, when Martin Luther launched Protestantism by nailing his 95 theses to a church door in Germany, religious thought got turned inside out, with many new Christian ideologies springing forth where there had been only one. Introduced to a whole world of people not following the official religion and not suffering terribly for it, many Europeans at least started to ask, what's going on in heaven? Is there one at all? 
If Earth is not the center of the universe, then what is? If there are lands, animals, and plants that no Easterner has ever seen, then what else don't we know? The result was lots of new ideas and lots of people making fun of others for their ideas and their looks and their personalities. Of course, all that information is very Eurocentric and limited to more recent times. In ancient times, the broader world beyond Europe and even during the European Middle Ages, comedy challenged social norms in less satirical ways. One of the most common ways to play with expectations was allowing characters to marry for love or across class boundaries, as in rich people with poor people. As I brought up in my video about romances, most societies had rigid rules about who could marry whom. Comedies have always ended in marriage while classical tragedies ended in death. Yet many comedies, including romantic comedies today, get laughs by pairing mismatched lovers that no one would expect to get along. This trend reflects a long-standing tradition in comedic theater. Messing with society's expectations about class, gender, sexuality, and sometimes religion, at least in polytheistic societies. Thus, the comedy was less political for reasons already discussed. So it's pretty easy to see that comedy can come in almost any form, sometimes even tucked away in otherwise tense situations. As you read the assigned selections, ask yourself, what's supposed to surprise me here? What would be surprising to the original audience? Am I laughing? If so, what's funny? Am I laughing at someone, with someone, or both? <laughs>